A study of over 700 rejected papers found that one of the top three reasons why papers got rejected was choosing the wrong journal. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to choose the right journal for your paper to increase your chances of it being published. I'm going to show you how to find free Q1 Scopus index journal so you never have to pay a dime for publishing. Obviously, I'm not starting from scratch when it comes to selecting the right journal because I've been in the field for a while and the paper is also ready. So as I have been writing it, different ideas for different journals have already popped into my mind. But I want to walk you through the exact process that I would use if this was my first time around and show you how I apply it in practice here to select the right journal for this paper. The first thing that I do is look at the reference list in here and you want to look at journals that appear most often in this reference list and make a note of those journals because if a journal appears here quite often then it might be a good fit for your study. And another way to look at it is not just how often a journal appears, but whether immediately just even the name of the journal resonates with the topic of your study. Because again, if that journal has published papers on broadly similar topics to the one that you're doing your paper on, because you put that reference in your reference list, then it's likely that it might be interested in papers like yours. It's not 100% certain, but it is entirely possible. So straight away, for example, this journal comes out to me as a journal that might be interested in my topic because my topic has all to do with discrimination, unequal job opportunities, and so on in English language teaching specifically. So even though I am actually not that familiar with this journal and I've never published there, it does seem like a good fit just because it's, you know, it says equity in education and my paper is about equity. So obviously in the next step, and I'll show you exactly how I do that, I would go to the journal's website and look at the scope and, and so on to see if my paper actually fits there. But this is just the, the first step. We want to make a list of journals, again, that appear several times in your reference list or from just from the name of it seem like journals that would be interested in your paper. Another way to look at it is, you know, journals that you know are really, really good journals in your field, maybe journals where you have published previously and therefore those journals might be interested in this paper and this is an example applied linguistics is it's a top one or five percent journal in my field language and and linguistics and i've published there before as well on broadly speaking the topic of discrimination inequality in english language teaching so there might be a journal who that that could potentially be interested in this paper again. So I'm going to do that right now and make a list of those potential journals. And then I'll show you the next step, which would be to narrow down that list uh, to top two or three journals where we'll be aiming to submit. So let's get the first step done. So now that you have a list of journals that, that we can use, I kind of divided it into more broadly education, educational journals that deal with equality, race issues, you know, racism, that sort of thing, or publishing, because my paper is also about the publishing industry in English language teaching specifically. And then I've got journals that are more related to English language teaching or linguistics, which is my field of study. So these first journals are kind of venturing outside a little bit of my more narrow specialism, whereas these ones are journals like I'm very familiar with and they're very much in my field right so that's another way to kind of to look at it as well whether you know you want to publish in your very narrow discipline or you want to go slightly more broadly something to consider something that i will be considering as i'm choosing the right journal and then in here i also put how many times that journal appeared on my 
reference list because you know at least in theory that the more often that journal appears that probably means that they're interested in publishing studies like yours since you're referring to those studies in your reference list that said you know i already know that this journal is unlikely to be interested how do i know that because i when i did a previous study like this i reached out to the editor i sent her the abstract and she said that's not the kind of study that we publish so i i don't i won't even go there because i know they're very unlikely to be interested in something like this um it's just not within their scope so i'll uh you know i'll i'll get rid of this one um straight away the next step obviously is to start looking at these journals go to their website Take a look at the scope of that journal to see if your paper is within the scope. I'm going to choose a journal that I'm a little bit more familiar with to demonstrate the process for you. And then I'm just going to apply it myself to all the other journals as well. And then you can just uh, repeat that process. So you're going to go to the website of this journal in here and straight away in here, we can, we can see the impact factor 4.2, which in my discipline, linguistics, language teaching is very very high like in medicine let's say 4.2 doesn't raise any eyebrows it's it's probably really low but in my discipline it's really really high so when you're looking at the impact factor don't look at the number itself because the number itself varies from discipline to discipline i mean in language teaching even a an impact factor of like two is already a Q1 journal. Whereas in, let's say medicine, like that would be a Q4 journal probably if it had an impact factor too. So it just varies greatly discipline to discipline. But we, we can look at the metrics in here more specifically, right? And what it tells you is like the rank, I mean, 15 out of 300 um, journals, that's a really top journal. So 15 divided by 303, yeah, that's a top 4% journal, right? When Q1 is just top 25. So this is like top, top really, um, which might be a, you know, a really good venue if you really want to make a big impact, provided that of course they want to publish your papers because probably the rejection rate is really, really high um, as well. And I've published with this journal before on a similar topic. So I also need to consider whether they would be interested in a follow-up study. It's been two years, I think. So not such a long time has passed by. So potentially they could be interested. What I would do here is um, make a note that this is a top journal. I'll make this full screen so you can see top 4% journal, impact factor 4.8, already published two years ago, right? Which could be an advantage because that means that they, they already are interested in studies like this because they, they've published studies like that. Or it could be a disadvantage because the editor might just feel like, well, we've already done a study like this, so we, we're not interested in any other studies and they could reject your paper straight away. Nothing to do with the quality of your paper, but they just feel like, well, we've already done stuff like this. We want other stuff, right? In terms of the, the scope, where you want to go on this a website is in the submit section on other journal websites it might be a slightly different name you know you've got author guidelines in here and then you want to you want to go through the general guidelines in here just to see if your paper is within the scope of this journal so as you can see, this is very clear. What I really like that about this journal. They, they even say, you know, if your research is like this, don't even submit it there because it's not going to be accepted, which I think is awesome because it saves you so much time with, you know, desk rejections. So this one is within the, the scope of, of my research for sure. And since I published that before, I'll definitely consider it. And then I'm now going to do the same for all the other journals. And if you want to, you can pause this video and go ahead and do exactly the same for your journals to choose. My aim will be to choose top three, maximum five journals in here. So let's get this done. Are you ready to implement these strategies to publish research papers in high impact journals in your discipline? Are you a professor, a researcher or a PhD student who would really like to advance their career, make a really big contribution to the field by publishing more papers in better journals while actually working less and enjoying the whole process? Then I've got really good news for you. I've just opened some slots in my calendar and you can book a free one-to-one -one consultation with me. 
stage, where we'll dive deeper and identify the specific challenge and bottleneck that is blocking you from achieving your full potential. And then we'll also clarify your goals. And then at the end, I'll outline an action plan for you that will help you to achieve all your academic goals, publish more papers, and advance your career. If this sounds like something that you want to do, book the free one-to-one -one consultation right now. The link is in the description of this video. Now, I'll maybe show you an example of why a journal does not fit the scope of your paper. So straight away, you know, in here, P12 schooling in the US or global context, that really doesn't fit my subject because my subject is not about P12 schooling. And also they seem to, even though they say global context in here, they do seem to be focused on the, on the US quite quite heavily in here, which is not the focus of, of my paper. So that's a bit concerning. And then again, authors should articulate the implications of the work for P12 schools, right? Which, you know, isn't really what I, what I do. So I'm going to cross this journal off my list, really. And this one, which we talked about earlier, I'll cross that off as well. And if you want to check whether a journal is a Q1 journal, and it's not clear from the website, as it is the case here, I mean, the site score, I imagine it, it refers to the impact factor of 5.2, but it's not listed anywhere here, whether it's a Q1, Q2 journal, you can go to Scopus, which is scopus.com slash sources, and just enter the title of the journal in here, and you will see the rank. So it's 87%. 87% means that it's in the top 13% of journals. And Q1 is top 25%, so therefore this is a Q1 journal. Now, if you're in doubt whether a journal is a good fit, and it ticks a lot of boxes for you because maybe it's a Q1 journal, and it does feel like a good fit, but there is something off about it. Like for example, in here for me, it talks about scholarly and professional communication, scholarly communication and publishing. So publishing, you know, is a topic of my paper, but it's not about scholarly publishing or academic publishing. It's, it's about publishing materials for English language teaching. So I'm not entirely sure if they would be interested in a paper like mine. And rather than waste time and go through the whole submission and prepare the manuscript and everything, you know, you just want to email the editor in chief and send them the abstract to find out if they would be interested in a study like this. This saves you so much time and I've done it before and it's it's really good because then, you know, one time, for example, the editor just told me, no, this just isn't a good fit. Don't even submit it, which is great. Saves me so much time. I submitted it somewhere else. I'm going to publish it somewhere else. Or the editor might say, yeah, this sounds like a really good fit. Why don't you submit it? So now that I've done this exercise, I can tell you where my mind is kind of going in terms of choosing the, the journal. I kind of feel more comfortable staying within my language teaching and linguistics field rather than going more broadly to, you know, the field of education or studies on racism and stuff like this. Especially that this journal, I mean, isn't even that amazing, right? If it was like a top 5% journal in the field. I might be inclined to go there, but I just kind of feel that probably 
you know, the theoretical framework, the references, the lit review that they are expecting will be very different from what I've got because mine is more narrowly focused on language teaching. And I think they just might reject it. I don't particularly want to go there. And again, it doesn't seem like such an amazing journal. Same for this one. I'm just not sure if it's the right fit right now because of the issues that I mentioned earlier. While it is a Q1 journal, again, it's not top 5% or top 1% or something like this. And since I don't know if they would be interested, I don't feel like necessarily wasting time and like emailing the, the editor and stuff like this. Again, if this was like a super top journal that I was absolutely hell bent on publishing in, I'd probably email the editor, but at the moment I'm I'm not, so I'm just gonna skip this. And then I've got these journals in here. When I look at them, I like I would love to publish in this one, which is a top 1% journal in the field it has the highest impact factor of all these journals this is going to be definitely on my list to to consider my only problem with this is that it sounds like they might be interested in something a little bit more practical than my study and while they're also interested in studies conducted more internationally they did mention something about southeast asia so yeah i want to double check before i choose this journal. I really like this one because it's interested in replication studies and mine kind of is a replication study. It's got a very high impact factor of 5.1. It's a top 3% journal, which is amazing. You know, I might consider this one. I've already published a study in this one two years ago. So I'm kind of on the fence about this one, to be perfectly honest, because they might not be interested in a similar study again. So for now, I'm gonna cross it out. And it's kind of also, when you've already published in a journal that's like really good, high impact factor for my discipline, then you might as well try to aim higher, like here or here, and publish in an even better journal and tick other journals off your list, if you will. That's kind of another way that I look at it. I mean, I've already published it. I take that super top journal off my list. Well, I might as well try and publish somewhere else. I think this could be a very good fit. I, I've read this publications from this journal several times. I know they're interested in issues on equality, you know, world Englishes, teaching English as a lingua franca, discrimination, racism. So they could be potentially a good fit. So it's really looking like you know, these three journals that I highlighted in green in here. And then I'm gonna leave Applied Linguistics as well, highlighted in yellow as, you know, as a fallback option. And I will check again RELC, just because of the high impact factor, I'm, I'd, I'd be really happy to publish in that journal. That said, you know, when I did look at the scope, it did seem like you know, they're interested in things that are a little bit more practical than my paper. Practical implications and applications are evident. That's true, there are practical implications of my paper. And, you know, they are interested in language curriculum and materials development. Mine is about materials development. They don't seem to be interested in issues of equality, racism. You know, it, it, it's kind of not 10 out of 10 definitely, but it, it does seem like it would be, you know, a, a good fit. And what I might do as well is read a few papers from that journal, from the recent issues, just to get a feel for it. So that's another thing that, that you want to go and you could go to the current issue or very often they have the list of like most cited papers and you can read there as well. And also another thing to look at is, is this journal free or not? And in my experience, the vast majority of Q1 journals are free to publish in, like this one. There are no fees payable to submit or publish in this journal. Now, some journals might have fees for making the paper open access, which is totally different, right? You can pay out of your own will if you want your paper to be open access, but that's an issue to, to look at. And again, in my experience, most journals are free to publish in, especially top, top journals. Now that you know how to choose the right journal and publish in Q1 journals for free, you might want to learn how to write more papers faster. And this next video shows you how to write papers for Q1 journals faster than 99% of researchers. So watch it next.